So we're used to seeing two-dimensional images and we can use two-dimensional images to perceive our three-dimensional world and we perceive time as maybe a fourth dimension, but then our ability to perceive dimensions um, is limited to those three or four dimensions. Parallel coordinates offer us a way of plotting even higher dimensional spaces than that. So in looking at the higher dimensional drawings or higher dimensional spaces, you can think of something like a square. A square consists of two one-dimensional lines, these two vertical lines, that are separated horizontally. So I've taken a one-dimensional line, copied it into a second vertical line, and then connected them up with lines between the vertices. So I've now I've got a two-dimensional square. If I want to make this two-dimensional square into a three-dimensional cube, I just copy the square, I move it in a direction, and then I just link up the corresponding vertices with lines and that gives me a three-dimensional cube. If I want a four-dimensional cube, I just take the three-dimensional cube and I make another copy of it and offset it in another direction and then just draw lines between the corresponding vertices and it gives me a tesseract, some two-dimensional projection of a four-dimensional cube. And so you can do this, but it's not very helpful for visualization uh, because you've got all these different directions that are being projected into a two-dimensional image and after three dimensions we're just not used to perceiving the world in four or higher dimensions and so we just have difficulty perceiving uh, four-dimensional or higher data being projected that way. If I have a scatter plot for example I, I, I can pretty readily see X and Y encoded in the positional uh, Cartesian coordinates of X and Y here. If I had a Z coordinate that's being projected, Z is being foreshortened as it's being projected here. And I've got to mentally remember that Z is some combination of horizontal and vertical that's different than the horizontal X or the vertical Y axis. So you can draw these hints that are basically similar to a shadow where I'm, where I'm indicating uh, with these dashed lines what the coordinates of this uh, green dot are in three dimensions because it lacks other visual cues of where it is in three dimensions. If you try to do this in four dimensions then it becomes a nightmare to manage all of those dimensions. So there's a better technique for doing this called parallel coordinates that uh, Al Inselberg uh, demonstrated to me back in the early 90s when, when they were first invented and I was quite blown away by his demonstration and I'll try to reproduce it here. So in parallel coordinates, um, we're going to take the Cartesian coordinates. We have a horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis. And we're going to take these axes and we're going to make them parallel instead of orthogonal uh, at right angles as they usually are. So I'm going to take the x-axis, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to take the y-axis and I'm going to put it here. And so I'll label this axis x and this axis y. So now the two axes are not orthogonal, they're parallel to each other, and they don't extend from the same origin. So the origin here is horizontally at the bottom, and increasing x goes up this axis, increasing y goes up this axis. So now I've got the data points, and I need to figure out where these data points occur. So if I take the uh, y coordinates of each data point, I can map each point onto its corresponding position on the y axis. I'm just basically dragging them across horizontally because their position in Y in this chart corresponds to their height along this Y axis. If I want to do the same thing for the X axis, I'm going to basically take the X position of each point and then I'm going to drag it to the corresponding X position on this vertical X axis. So the horizontal length here corresponds to the vertical length here. And so blue and red are at the same horizontal x-coordinate and so they overlap each other on the x-axis and then green is, uh, is a little bit farther to the right so it's going to be a little bit higher on the parallel x-axis yellow is a little bit farther to the right so it's going to be a little bit higher and then this blue-green color dot is, is, is the farthest right so it'll be the highest on the x-axis so now I've, I've got these, this one set of points that's now appearing as two sets of points and I've got a correspondence between color but it's and color is a good uh, perceptual indicator of uh, category 
but it's it's very difficult to perceive what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're instead of displaying these as points on the axis, I'm going to connect these points with lines. And I'm going to delete the uh, the original points. And now we get this nice duality uh, between points in the coordinate system here and lines in the coordinate system here. So this this orange point here has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. It corresponds to this line connecting its x-coordinate to its y-coordinate. And so each one of these five points in the Cartesian x-y-coordinate system corresponds to a line in the parallel x-y-coordinate system here. Some other features are collinearity. So if these three points lie along the same line, then you get this nice convergence in parallel coordinates. And so you can see some collinearity that happens because lines in parallel coordinates corresponding to points in Cartesian coordinates that are collinear will basically converge to a point in the parallel coordinate system. So you can add extra dimensions. If I had a z-axis here, I'd have to add all sorts of three-dimensional cues to these data points to figure out where they are in three dimensions in parallel coordinates. I just add a z-axis here and then I can connect the z-coordinates to the y-coordinates and f follow this line from its x-coordinate to its y-coordinate to its z-coordinate. And if I had a fourth w-axis, it's actually easy to add a fourth axis here. And in fact, I may have all of these points may be collinear in the uh, ZW coordinate system and you can see because these lines are kind of converging to the same point. The point that they converge to doesn't necessarily have to be between the axes but there are some ways of helping a person to see these these points. And so these parallel coordinates are really useful for high dimensional um, data and you, you get this uh, uh, correspondence of being able to follow these lines through the various coordinates and have them correspond to points here and it's easier to, to see some relationships. There could be correspondences between um, the w-axis and the y-axis and we wouldn't see those unless we also had lines from these points on the w-axis to the points on the y-axis and so you get a bit of a combinatorial nightmare when you try to connect every axis to every other axis. So there's some decision making that needs to happen if you're going to show correspondences between axes to choose to have those axes next to each other in the parallel coordinate system. So parallel coordinates take the orthogonal axes of the Cartesian coordinate system and they lay them out in parallel and you can have any number of these parallel coordinate axes laid next to each other and you can start to perceive um, higher dimensional data using these parallel coordinates. Some of the problems of parallel coordinates are the fact that you're only seeing the pairwise relationship between the axes, but they can be very useful for finding uh, certain features in your data, for example, collinearity.